<laughs> All right. What's going on, guys? My name is Josh Corporal, and welcome to another episode of Fire Builders Live. We are streaming live from Key West, Florida, hence all of the honking and stuff. Of course, that starts to happen right during the intro. Uh, and today I have very special guest, Ashley Armstrong, on the show. Ashley, welcome to Fire Builders Live. Hey, hey, everybody. Thank you so much for having me here. Oh, I'm super excited. I am too. This is great. Uh, I really appreciate the time. Before we dive in to how this is all going to work and talking about building a rock star team, guys, if you are unfamiliar with how Fire Builders Live works, what we do is we bring on guests every day, Monday through Saturday. We stream live at noon and we talk about these great big topics. We break them down into simple steps, things that you can do every day consistently that won't overwhelm you because the consistency is the key. And today we're talking about building a team. Now, I don't know how many people, honestly, that are listening right now have tried to do this, but it is not easy. It's one of those things that it's, it's simple, but it's not easy. And I think that the reason that it's not easy is because a lot of times we overcomplicate the process or we've maybe had some bad experiences with hiring people in the past that have burned us. Well, that's what we're gonna talk about today with Ashley. So let me tell you a little bit about what she has done because it's a very impressive resume. You've built a successful seven-figure business all with physical products. Then you created the uh, Amaze Authority. Basically, it's an e-commerce consulting firm. And you've been featured in all kinds of different places like CBS, NBC, ABC, Fox News, you have consulted for people like Naveen Jain, right? Who is uh, a big tech entrepreneur. If you don't know who Naveen is, he's a great guy. You should look him up. And so most recently, and the reason that you ended up building this team is that you now have this incredible new opportunity, this, um, this uh, e-commerce like product infographic service that you're providing, these drag and drop templates. And that alone is taking up so much time. And I know it's something that's needed in the e-commerce community. So it necessitated an amazing rock star team. And you did this all while being a full-time mom, while being locked down in COVID. So honestly, <laughs> really appreciate your time today and welcome to the show. Oh my gosh, thank you. Talk about an intro. Who's that person? I don't know who that person is. <laughs> <laughs> who is that? Uh, who is that? So, so uh, great to have you here. Um, I, I, I might as well just say like, uh, because maybe people that are watching right now, if you're listening behind Ashley is this big dome, everybody talks about it. So let's just get it out of the way. What is behind you right now? This is one of those travel pop-up domes. It's big, like a big circle sort of tent fabric that attaches to the back of any chair. And it's one of those amazing things that if you need to create a little bit of privacy, no matter where you are, whether you're at Starbucks or anywhere, take this bad boy, throw it onto a chair and you got your kind of your little privacy. <laughs> That's it's genius. It's like in lieu of a green screen or like you yep. were saying, those like big drapes and stuff. Have you honestly ever used that in a Starbucks? Um, I haven't, but I know people have. <laughs> no way. Um, yeah, I actually saw someone post about it somewhere on Facebook land and I'm like, oh my God, that's exactly what I need. Cause I've tried to buy all these other big structures and I'm in a small condo and I have children running around and who has space for that kind of stuff. And sure enough, this thing seems to work quite well. Everyone thinks I'm in a tent and I'm camping, but uh, <laughs> get the job done. <laughs> I love it. I love it. No, it looks great. And, uh, and, and so, okay, so let's talk a little bit. What I, how I like to start off these interviews is uh, is by you know saying asking where you are in the world and what's a typical day now like today kind of during lockdown in mm -hmm. Ashley's life. What does it look like? Yeah, well, I'm in Vancouver, Canada right now, um, which I'm very grateful for. Uh, I have to tell you, out where we are, things have they very quickly made decisions. They very quickly slow um, shut things down for the most part. And so we've come out of it really fast, I guess you could say, and we haven't really had too much of a blip in our daily lives. So yes, we do have lines and yes, there's like, you know, tape on the ground. Um, you know, yes, people are wearing masks if they so choose to and they're out and about or whatnot. But really at the end of the day, it's for us because I've always worked from home. It's been like 14 years. My life hasn't really been um, changed too much other than the fact that I have two preteens who you know technically need homeschooling who should be able to handle doing things on their own but not quite and it's like hurting cats 
So trying to be a mom and be a business owner and deal with clients and do calls and do homeschooling and do the cooking and the cleaning and the shopping, whatever, it definitely piled on me like many other parents out there, um, you know, or anyone who has responsibilities, elderly or small children or something along those lines. But it hasn't changed too, too much. And it's a gorgeous sunny day. And I live right against the ocean entrance to Granville Island. It's like the most gorgeous place, sea walls, parks and whatnot. So honestly, I can't complain. <laughs> That's so awesome. And I mean, it's, it's true that, um, you know, just, just, just owning and operating a business is busy enough, but then to do it with an entire family to, to wrangle every yes. day with daily responsibilities is insane. I, I can't relate to that. I don't, I don't even know what those pressures are. So kudos to you. I don't know what it's like happen. to just have to look after me. I'm like, what does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> do you think you could do it? Or would you know. panic? <laughs> Well, it's uh, so that's why I think it's so impressive what you've done, like everything that you've achieved. And and we were talking a little bit about this before the show about building a team and and why people sort of stray away from that, um, you know, simply because it's it's it's, it's intimidating. And sometimes you don't really feel like you can lead in a proper way. Uh, you want to become the best example possible. But at the same time, you know. <laughs> Some people are real with themselves and they're like, yo, like do what I say, not what I do sort of thing, you know? Um, yeah. How, I would say, why were, did you first recognize that you needed to build this team? Like what was happening? Oh. Well, you know, I, one, number one, I'm gonna be talking specifically from my perspective and kind of what I'm going through. So that's kind of number one. But, and I could be speaking about or for other moms or shedding some light, but, even when you have a super hands-on spouse, for some strange reason, we seem to just buy, I don't even know, like we just seem to get the majority or the bulk of the load kind of put on our shoulders for everything, doctor's appointments, play dates, you know, remembering someone's birthday present that you have to buy three weeks in advance. And then of course the daily responsibilities, cooking, cleaning, shopping, and everything else like that. And, you know, I was really struggling at home trying to manage all of this stuff, especially with the pandemic. And I'm just like, I am not doing a great job getting my kids educated every single day. And I'm not doing a great job getting the tasks done. And, you know, and I was just kind of going along the lines of, okay, so if I were to bring someone into my home to help me, what was that number one thing that if I took it off my plate, it I'd feel like a million bucks. I'd feel like I'd be able to breathe. And so like for me, it's like dishes and dinner. <laughs> and I think most people can probably <laughs> say the same thing. And, uh, you know, I used to, we used to have a full-time maid and nanny who looked after our children in certain aspects. And she handled a lot of, I didn't have to do a lot of the, you know, so the, the everyday domestic sort of work. And I was very, very blessed that I had that type of support and definitely took it for granted at the time. And, you know, when we, sort of moved, I became more domesticated. We didn't have, you know, my longtime person here anymore. And my kids are a little bit older, so they definitely needed to handle their own responsibilities. So it was a good transition anyways. But, you know, it just kind of brought me back to like, what are those two or one things I can take off my plate that would make me feel like a million bucks? And that's really what it is, is dinner and dishes. And, you know, one, now that I got my kids kind of trained and people kind of helping out with those things that were really bogging me down, I kind of had this like epiphany when I was flipping out about work going like, I have all these ideas, I have all these things I need to get done. What is that one thing that I could do to alleviate that stress to help me move forward with my business? And I kind of had like sort of the same sort of, you know, pathway uh, for the most part. So yeah, it's just one of those things that look into your life. What's the thing that pisses you off the most? What can help you, you know, get things done or make you feel great because someone took that burden off your shoulders? And um, so when it came to business, I really needed a right hand man or right hand woman, uh, someone who could be like my executive assistant who could just take all my verbal blah, 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 and take it all out, extract it, organize it, put it in spreadsheets and be like, this is what you're doing now, Ashley. I'm like, yes, that's exactly what I need. Take my craziness and organize it. <laughs> Have you found that that when you hand off like responsibilities like that to someone, that you're afraid that they're not going to do as well of a job as you could potentially do. And you're oh, like yeah, yeah. apprehensive about that. Definitely. Definitely. And I also think that could very well, maybe it's a mom thing. I don't know. Maybe it's a female thing. I don't know, but we definitely have a, we know how to do it, do it our way, do it the right way kind of thing. But, um, 
Because that's what I was I, thinking when you said like the dinner and the dishes and like bringing something, just something like that, which might might be the most like time consuming thing, or it may not be. It's just something that you hate, you know. Right. Uh, and but but even in passing the responsibility of something that you hate on to someone else, you still like. I feel like in the back of your mind, there's that like judgment there that says, yeah. "Hey, even though I dislike doing that, you better do it to my standards." You know, kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, and you know, I've gone through a lot of hires who did not live up to those standards. So it's a quick hire and fire. Um, I've actually gone through three different people in the last two months on that exact reason. Uh, you know, when you interview people, <clears throat> excuse me, you interview people, and you hire someone, you hope you're clear enough with what it is that you're expecting out of them. Um, you know, and what it is that you're trying to accomplish and that you're clear enough with that vision so that they can take hold of it, hold of it and like run. But a lot of the times, yes, I've definitely had someone where they were supposed to do graphic design and I can do bare minimum basics. Like I've had to teach myself over the years so I can get something done if I need to get done. But I am not a graphic designer. I don't have all the bells and whistles, let alone, you know, the capacity to think like that. And sure enough, you know, some of the deliverables are like, dude, I can do a better job than you. This is why am I paying you? Like, <laughs> if yeah. I can do it better than you, we know we have a problem. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's actually a really good point, right? Because, because where do you draw the line? I feel like it's personal preference with everybody. Where do you draw the line? Um, on one side of the scale, if you need to delegate a task, sometimes you say to yourself, I don't, I don't even want to involve myself in this task. I just want somebody to do it. And on the other side of the scale, you have, I know everything there is to know about this task, and now I just want it taken off of my plate. And somewhere in the middle of that gray area Ooh. is a line that you draw. Where is that line for you for most things? You know, I, I think it fluctuates no matter what you're talking about, what task you're on. And I'm literally in that position right now. And it's so funny that you bring that up where, you know, we're, we're pitching TVs, we're pitching, pitching producers and things of that nature. And some of them have these like big checkout forms they want you to answer, like, you know, all these sort of questions. And so I have my writer who helps me with literally everything. And I just sent it off to her. I didn't even read it. Like, I'm like, there's a whole bunch of questions in there. And I'm like, do I actually have to answer those myself? Like, oh, I sent it off to her. And she's like, yeah, actually, you're totally going to have to answer these questions yourself. There's not much I can do here. You write them and then I can make it look pretty if you want. I'm like, okay, <laughs> so I can at least get some help that way. But yeah, it, there's definitely that fine line between you know, just trusting someone to get the job done. And then, and then it's kind of like with kids, you kind of give them like a little bit of a leash, you know, a little bit of ropes. Let's see how far they can go. Hopefully they don't hang themselves kind of thing. And then, you know, they bring it back to you, you proofread it, you know, quickly, hopefully you don't have to spend too much time and energy with editing. And then you're like, yeah, approve, like move it forward. So finding that fine line of giving them enough space and time to also bring their expertise to the table because the reason why you're bringing people onto your team is hopefully because they're gonna do a job that one, you do not like to do, you hate doing, or you have no idea how to do. And so you're really putting your trust in someone and being able to get a job done, but you're also hoping that you're finding the right type of people who can buy into your dream. A lot of people just wanna get in, make the money and get out. And it's really, there's a real big difference in finding people to join your team who buy into your dream. You know what I mean? And so, you know, I've been experiencing that where I have people who are hundred percent have my back no matter what, even if I couldn't pay them tomorrow, they would still show up. Like I love them. And then we have other people who don't really follow directions. They're not following suits. They're, you know what I mean? Like they're, we're constantly having to remind them to like do things or things of that nature. And so I'm kind of, I'm in the middle right now kind of experiencing that. So it's kind of funny that you brought that up. Yeah, yeah, I feel like it's a big reality. And also with that, all the trust that you provide that person, it's, a, it's also the question comes up as to how do you treat them? Like, do you treat them as an employee or do you treat them as a, like a family member almost? Yeah, you know? and that's a really good question because I, I did actually have full-time nannies and maids for years and they do kind of become family members after a while. Like, you know, they see your children grow. They're there with you all the time. They see you cry. They see you whatever, like that's in-home. Now, if we flip it to professional where people traditionally don't really see you cry, um, especially because we're not in an office and you can just shut the computer down really quickly if you have to run away. Like video um, off. Yeah, video off. Mute. Sort of thing, <laughs> or, or whatnot, but... Um, yeah, you know, it's, 
when you have people around and, and, and allowing them to sort of see into your world and, and you're giving them, you know, I think it's really different for everyone. I really did tell you that at the end of the day, because some people have trust issues in certain aspects. And I think that's also another reason why people don't end up hiring people on top of the fact that they have other people they have to be responsible for. Like when you hire people, they might have, well, they have to take care of themselves, but they also might have family and they might have children that they also have to take care of or businesses that they're floating or something of that nature. So when you bring people on, you have to keep that power position because it's your job, it's your, you know, it's your business and it's where you want to go. But at the same time, the way that I like to look at it is when I grow, everyone grows. When I succeed, everyone on my team succeed. You know, if my team wants to, if members on my team are starting an agency and they need testimonials, they need reviews or whatever, I'll do everything I can to make sure I can help them support their dream. You know, it's like they say, if you can help someone grow past you know, above and beyond where you are, then you've done your a service of kind of paying it forward and not kind of holding people back. And I have actually worked with people where they have a really great team member and they purposely hold them back so they don't leave because they don't want to have to find someone new. And I totally don't want to have to deal with that. And I'm sure it will come one day. Um, but, you know, having that fine line of a fun, exciting environment where you can joke around and you can support each other and you can be honest, but still like holding, you know, that like, okay, this needs to get done. I expect you to do it. This is the timeline. This is the deadline. Like, <laughs> these are your responsibilities. Get the job done. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like, it's and sometimes like, it's like, I don't even really care how you get it done. Like, I'm not here to micromanage you. It's just like, yeah. this is what needs to happen. Just put the steps in place to use your own best judgment. Uh, and so that is actually a great segue into the first thing. I mean, there's probably people that are listening right now that are considering hiring their first team member, for instance, right? Yeah. Starting with one. And a question that I always love to ask guests on this show is when it comes to finding that person, how do you go about it personally from your experience? If you had to explain it to an eight-year-old kid who is going to build a team for a lemonade stand or something along those lines and he wanted to or she wanted to create the perfect team yeah where would they start that's a really great question and at the end of the day you basically have to look into or create like a little bit of a checklist for yourself what is it that you're trying to accomplish and who are the people or the expertise you need in order to get that job done and it could be like a very long list but then you have to kind of bring it down to the, the point as to, okay, what's going to be the most impactful? If I can hire one person to handle a large majority of what's on this list, that's kind of the direction, generally speaking, you want to go into. And I could be speaking for myself, but I would definitely say most business owners or solopreneurs, entrepreneurs, nine times out of 10, they need someone just to be the right hand person, an executive assistant who, you know, um, project management, create SOP, standard operating procedures, so that the business is organized. And if the business is organized, then you can bring other employees in, you can scale, you can grow, you can make more money. And you just feel really good at the end of the day because you know what's happening, you know where everything is, you know everything's gonna be accounted for, no one's gonna miss anything. So the one thing that we really wanna think about or come up with is, you know, you want to come up with a system that filters people out when you're going through the hiring process. There's tons of platforms out there that you can use, like Upwork.com. Um, there's OnlineJobs.ph for anyone who's in the Philippines. There's a million of them. There's tons and tons and tons of virtual assistance ones. And then, of course, depending on what country you're in, you have like Indeed in Canada, where you can, you know, businesses can put job posting. LinkedIn is a great place to put, you know, job postings and find people. So it's it's just kind of along the lines of the first thing that you can do is figure out all the tasks that you're trying to get done, what's the biggest task, the ones, the biggest hurdle, the one that you don't like to do the most and try to find the person to put it into that position. And then of course, utilize the platforms that are available to us to find the right people. There's even platforms where, um, I honestly don't remember the name of it, but I did use it years ago where there's like ex CEOs and really, really well established women who were out, you know, in the corporate world, but now they're stay at home moms and they still want to be able to engage and they still want to be able to fire their brain up and, and do some work. And there is a platform that is completely dedicated to women who are 
extremely well established, but now they're stay at home mom. So we can, you can still tap that expertise. So it's really amazing what's out there. Well, I'm curious as you, cause you said a couple of things that really perked my attention up, right? One was the filtration process, going and putting people through some type of way to see if this is the right person. But I'm curious, even before that, what was, what was the first thing that you ended up deciding from a business perspective? Uh, what was that big task and that first big hire? What, like, what was the responsibility Executive for you? assistant. Yeah. Definitely executive assistant. I am the visionary strategist. I'm flighty. I'm all over the place. I come up with ideas in 2.2 seconds. I'm like all over the place. And so I need someone who can totally handle the speed that I go and the excitement that I have. And I'm like, I'm going to do this and this and this and this and this. And I'm like, it's, it's just amazing how fast and what everything I want to do. But I think most people are like that, you know, especially when you get fired up and you get excited about stuff. Yeah. And so having someone who literally can pull me back and like, no, slow down. No, do not hire them yet. Make them do a test first. And I'm just like, oh, they seem great. Let's just hire. Like, let's go. Let's go. I'm just so excited. And then my uh, EA, you absolutely love her. She's like, no, Ashley. And I'm like, oh, okay, you're right. <laughs> yeah. She calls it every time. So yeah, for me, it was a v it was an EA. It was someone who could just have my back and someone I could rely on and someone who can help organize all the craziness in my brain and organize my business at the same time. So, and it feels amazing to have that type of support. So I would say, because I've been doing this long enough and I've gone through tons of hires and I'm specifically talking about the hires that I have right now. Like I've lots of like, hire and fire like crazy over the last 10 years. Um, but this has been the most successful hiring that I've had. And it's also because I'm also more clear on what it is that I want to accomplish. Yeah, I think that's a, that is a huge part of the process. And sometimes that clarity doesn't come until you live through a lot of mistakes and a lot yeah. of like mishires and stuff. You know, it's like one of those things where, you know, life is too short to make all of your own mistakes. You try to learn from others. But in these instances, like with hiring in particular, I don't know anybody that's really been like, yep, I followed everybody's advice the very first time and it went perfectly. I don't think that person exists. If they do comment right now, I would love yeah. to talk with you. Please let me uh, know. <laughs> <laughs> but for the most part, it's one of those things where you just have to go through the process and see what works for you and, and what doesn't. And yeah. And it's okay if you hire someone and you put them on like, a week by week, you know, first month trial run. And if they don't work out, they don't work out. And, if, and you know, when you're in a position where you're a solopreneur, you kind of feel personal, you know what I mean? And it kind of feels bad sometimes. And I definitely, I'm like, I just want to give them a little bit more time. I, I want to give them a chance, you know what I mean? Because like, at the end of the day, we're not only helping ourselves, but we're helping somebody else in one aspect. I always like to look at both sides of the coin for sure. But it's just... Yeah, you know, it's like that kind of feeling on the inside that you're just like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, I mean, because, yeah, I can see that because nobody wants to be the hatchet man, you know, yeah. and let this person go. Um, it's disappointing, but it sort of needs to be done. Like you said earlier, you know, like hire slow, fire fast. Like if you have like a quick turnaround with people, that's the best thing that you can do. Yeah. Um, and not try and draw out the relationship. Yeah, because uh, this animosity gets created and you like waste time, you waste money, you slow down like your objectives and your timelines and yeah, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous. And you have to go through it a few times. And even when you do go through it a few times, you still try to be the good person <laughs> and help someone yeah. out. But you know, at the end of the day, you know, you have to put yourself in a position where you're the decision maker and you have a job that needs to get done. And so hold yourself accountable and hold the people around you accountable and don't be wishy-washy. Yep. Yep. Agree with that. What do you think about the phrase that no one is going to love your business as much as you do? Um, you know, when you, when it comes to hiring people and you have these real high expectations for them, how do you temper the fact that you know that, look, they're working for your dream, not their own dream. So yeah. you're going to be the one that's most passionate about it and they will be X percent passionate about it, but it won't be 100%. Do you agree with that? I think it's a fine line to be quite honest with you. You know, you, you hear about work environments like, you know, Google or whatever, they have a big, you know, pool table and hangout spot or whatever it might be. And so they're cultivating an environment where people feel like they can enjoy life and enjoy what they're doing for work and hopefully have um, a leadership team that, you know, inspires and innovates. And then, you know, we've 
also experienced, I've experienced, and um, I'm sure lots of people have, where they're in an environment where it's very bogged down under the thumb. It's very, the vibrational tendency is negative. You don't necessarily like the people you're working with. You, you butt heads and you, you know what I mean? So when it, when, you, when you're making that statement, it's just like, I'm always gonna be the most passionate about what I'm trying to accomplish, yes. And I could totally be wrong because I, you know, I, I'm, I'll let you know tomorrow. But right now I feel that the people that I'm really attracting and I'm bringing around me because I purposely say, and it's my motto that when I grow, you grow, whatever you're trying to accomplish, I will help you accomplish it as well. Like, yes, these are my dreams. Yes, you are working on what I'm doing right now, but what are you doing and what can I help you with? Right. So I think if they, if it's like that kind of balance, it really sort of depends. Cause if the, if, if the, if the people who are working with you and for you enjoy you as a person, enjoy the products that you're working on and they're able to make money and they're able to support their family. I think that's a win win because most people don't like where they work or what they do. in a lot of cases, they don't like the people they work around. And so if you're able to provide someone with a, a safe environment where they can be creative and they can, you know, just uh, take the actual steps that they want to take and they have the full freedom, which is another one thing for me. I, I do not micromanage anybody. I a hundred percent go, you need to be an expert and we'll collaborate and I'll tell you what I want to get done, but you're the one who's going to go do it. And like you said, I expect you just go do it. Just make the decision and get the job done. And then we'll talk about it afterwards. Yeah. Um, so that, that's how, that's how I roll. I don't want to know about your process. I don't want to know what's going through. I just want to say, get this done. And then you'd be like, okay, I got this and this and this, and please review this, 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 and this, and let me know what you think. And then we'll move on tomorrow. And I'm, and I love that, you know, it makes really fast, uh, fast turnarounds as well. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think that's a great sort of way to go into this sort of other big question that I had, which was your filtration process, particularly mm -hmm. with your first big hire. So if it was the EA and you need somebody that's kind of a, a jack of all trades is, is skilled in not only communication, but also like the tech pieces and everything to make that all work. But I yeah. think more importantly, that their strength of character is such oh. that they can tell you no, right? Because, yeah. because not a lot of, not a lot of assistance, have that they they're they're gonna say look just tell me what to do and i'll do it and it's it takes somebody a really strong charactered person to say ashley like you're going chaotic here we need to rail <laughs> we need to bring it back a little bit and and figure out how we're going to make this happen so how did your what were the first steps of your filtration process for that yeah that's a really great question and i actually use the same filtration process for every single hire that i have and Nine times out of 10, it's actually steered me in the right direction. There's the, always that 1% where I'm like, mm, that wasn't such a great hire, but it is what it is. It's, you know, a numbers game. And so what we do, I actually made a little bit of a list so I don't screw up or forget anything. <laughs> um, whatever platform that you're on, you, you know, find it, first and foremost, you said a jack of all trades. Hiring a jack of all trades can totally bite you in the ass. It really, really can. And so you wanna be, a little bit more conscious of the fact that if you get someone who's too good at you know is generalistic and everything they're not going to be an expert in anything and that also goes for us as well as experts so that's kind of one aspect um, and so the way that we do it is within our application my applications are always very long and very detail oriented and it also proves the point that it's in your best interest to do at least a little bit of research, a little bit of education about what it is you're trying to accomplish. So when you are hiring someone, you know that they know what they're talking about and they're also gonna get the job done. If you completely hire completely blind with zero understanding, that's when you can really get yourself into a lot of trouble. But going back to the list, so what we do is do, 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 do. Of course you put like who you are, what your company is, what it is that you're trying to accomplish. And then what I do is I create a list, just like little bullet points of the skill sets that I need you to have. So let's just say graphic designer, SEO, blah, 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 whatever these things, you know, kind of be, or like be able to use Builderall or be able to use ClickFunnels or be able, you know, like whatever the software tools, like you just make your list. And then underneath that list, I ask them to respond um, with the number scale of one to 10 beside each skill set. I'm like, I want you to tell me how good you are with graphics, a one or a 10. So they do that. 
And then the next thing that we always ask them to do, is, especially if you're going to be do, using international VAs or contractors, um, their internet speed test, I want a screenshot of that. So I know if they have like a 1% <laughs> or if they have a 50% and they're never going to run out of internet, um, uh, internet problems. Uh, always two references, of course portfolio that's obvious of course and a video telling me why they think they're the right person for me it takes a little bit of guts to be able to just like throw up a video and be like hey i am so and so and i believe i can do this job better than anybody else you know so not everyone does it and the ones who do do it usually end up being a pretty good pick i um, love that by the way that's the first time i've ever heard anybody say that yeah and then um another thing i always do because i'm a very bubbly laughy like all over the place kind of person which i'm sure you've probably figured out by now anyone who's watching is like who is this girl um i always ask like do you like to um, laugh and joke what is one of your um extracurricular hobbies like do you like to do i, I want to know if people like do yoga or if they do painting classes do they hike they bike they do sports they you know i i really want to get to know the individual person who i'm bringing into my space because I, I really do protect my space my environment my energy and then the very last thing that i do in all of my job postings is the very last thing the very end i always say please reply or apply to the job posting starting with I am the person for you, quotation marks. And so when someone is applying for your job application, if within the first paragraph or literally the very first thing on that application does not say, I am the person for you, I immediately delete because they didn't get to the bottom of it. They didn't you know, follow directions. And then of course you filter out by going, did they put the one to 10 on all the skill sets? Like, do they like to laugh and play? Are they more of a serious personality? Do they do, you know, some sort of cool extracurricular activity that I kind of, you know, have a relation to, you know, so you can kind of get used to the person's personality before you even get to the interview stage. And then, so that really quickly, and I'm telling you, it's really quick how fast you can filter out the people who just don't pay attention and they're just copying and pasting and they're just, yeah. you know, applying for jobs through like their you know, they're not even reading anything. It's just copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. And I don't want someone like that, you know, on my team because I'm not, um, I'm not here just to pay someone so they can do the work and then leave, even though of course that's what it is technically at the end of the day, but I want to inspire and motivate not only myself, but the people around me, so. Yep, agreed. And I'm just out of curiosity, what percentage of people do you think fail that test? Oh, just dude. that one test. Oh, I still have, I still have job postings going right now, I tell you. Um, we had, I can actually tell you this, we had 36 applications for one of our job posts that was last month. And out of those 36, I had five that were shortlisted. Five, so five people shortlisted but, being like they I, wrote the that up at the top. You, I put my one to 10 on all the skill sets that I have. I answered all the questions. I put a screenshot of my internet speed. Um, you know, I, and sometimes they won't reply with a video because they're like, I'm not a little nervous about that, but I'd be happy to do an interview with you or whatever it might be. So I do find that I do allow that as like, mm, I totally get it. It's okay. But yeah. everything else is like, no, 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 no. If you don't know what your skill set is with, if I need somebody who's a graphic designer, are you a one or are you a 10? Because I'm like a two, three, you know what I mean? Like I need to, yeah. know, where, <laughs> I need to know where you're at when it comes to me. So yeah, if, if it's not, if they don't pay attention, then it's just not the right person for you because they're not gonna pay attention to anything else that you tell them to do either. Yeah, how they do one thing is pretty much how they're gonna do it all. And yeah. and so so here, so let me bring this up, right? If somebody went through this process, because I would imagine that your filtration process takes some time, like it can't just be done in one or two days, but if they yeah. were to focus on it consistently, paint the picture, at least in your experience, where would they end up after say, um, you know, a couple of weeks? Yeah, and, and, and I love that you actually brought that up because like everything in life, including business, most people expect things to get done faster and nine times out of 10, it takes three times longer than you anticipate to do anything. <laughs> and there's nothing different when it comes to the hiring process either. You know, you wanna give yourself definitely a month, no matter what, minimum, um, to really go through that that process of crafting the right job posting to make sure that you're clear on what it is you're looking for, you're clear on your sort of personality and what type of um, um, skill sets that you're looking for. And then of course the filtration process where we, yes, we do go through one interview. And then a lot of times we actually create like a little test, like a little five minute test or questionnaire, or if I'm asking you to uh, format a spreadsheet, 
go and do this formatting spreadsheet and show me that you can get the job done, you can follow the tasks, and you can do it in a timely manner. So we kind of do put up these sort of parameters to kind of help us along and to filter out and to find the right people. Um, and then by the time, by the time you actually find someone and you hire someone, you want to give yourself at least a minimum two weeks to just kind of like you're kind of like in a dating period, <laughs> especially when you're a solopreneur because it's just you and that person. Feeling them out, yeah, yeah. You know, like you're not in a big office full of other people where you get to bounce off of different energies and talk to different people. Like this is the only person you're talking to, and you're gonna have to tell them what to do all the time, and you're gonna have to do it in a in a way that doesn't offend someone. Um, you know, you know, it could be language barriers, it could be you know culture barriers. Like there's lots of these different things that we take into consideration, but you kind of like you're you're sort of like in a dating phase. You're you're in that getting to know each other phase, and usually after about two first week, it's like okay, who the hell are you? And okay, I hired you. This is vomit of everything about me. My website, the da 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 da, because they have to like become an expert on who you are. So that's kind of like week number one. Who the hell is Ashley Armstrong? What does Ashley Armstrong do? And then the second week is like, okay, I see all these things. And then it's collaboration. Like, where do you think we could go to make things easier for what it is that we're trying to accomplish? What recommendations do you have? Because again, I hire people who are experts in their own right, and I expect them to tell me what to do. I'll say yay or nay, and we'll collaborate. But I'm like, you tell me what needs to get done. That's why you're here. <laughs> I don't want to yeah. think about it. I'm thinking about all this stuff over here. You think about the areas that you're really rock at. And then by the time you get to like week three, you kind of create that synergistic, you know, sort of relationship. And by the time you're done for the month, you can almost breathe because all that stuff that's been sitting on your plate, all those stresses and your teeth and you're crunching and you can't sleep at night and you wake up early and you're staying up late and you're just like, oh my God, I have so much to do. You get to sit back and you're like, oh my God, I'm going to hang out with my kids. What or, am I going to do with this to, time? I, I can go to bed early or <laughs> I can actually cook dinner on time. Like, oh my God, <laughs> the epiphany that you have. And it's just a really beautiful experience and opportunity to help another family out or help another individual by hiring them, of course, and then putting your trust in someone else. Like that takes a leap of faith in yourself as well as anything else. And then, you know, being okay with the idea that a lot, I find a lot of people, including myself, who didn't hire because where am I going to get the money? Am I going to be able to continue to get the money? I have to be responsible for this person. They need to put food on their table. They have children. And I don't know if I can be, you know, like I can take care of my own and I can live without, but can they live without, you know, like and then all those like really weird sort of questions that kind of go through our heads. Um, and it, it definitely makes you nerv nervous to do so and to step into that light. But I tell you, just push past it and just, start with what's the number one thing that you do not like doing or where you sort of fall short and find the person to fill that void. And for me, it was organization, data, you know, all that crap. I'm just like, no, 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 no. And finding that person for me, just that one, it allowed me, once that one person was there and we had a solid foundation of what I'm doing and how I'm doing it, and I literally have zero like zero input on what gets done and how it gets organized. Like, I don't even know where anything is. I know it's all there. I can go there and I can see it, but I don't put it there. I don't know where it is. And because I don't have to think about it, I don't have to do it. I've been exponentially able to hire, 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 and all my team out like ridiculously fast because that one solid leg, that one solid piece for that foundation was set. And then I was able to get the second leg for the foundation, the third leg for the foundation. And now I have a whole team that when we get on, we laugh and we giggle and, and it's hilarious and, it's, and we'll make fun of things and well, it's just awesome. And every single day, everyone's just turning the work out like clockwork. And I'm just like, oh my God, thank God, thank God, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> it's so cool because just, I mean, I can tell how pumped up you're getting just by talking about it. And, uh, and I think that you're experiencing a level of euphoria with the team that a lot of people never get to experience because they don't take the time systematically right. to do what you just said. Uh, yeah. So that I think that's amazing what you've done. Thanks. Yeah. Well, you know, if you're, you know, put the good energy out there and if you pay it forward, you know, I always feel that the universe is always going to provide one way or the other. Agreed. Agreed. Somebody, uh, uh, let's see, who was it? Um, came on and said, said, you are your own net. Like you have to, you know, you have to become your own net in a way. Um, yeah. Pam Pryor was the one that said that. Yeah. And, and it's the kind of thing where you just sort of like put yourself out there, you go through the hiring process, you realize that, look, Hey, whatever the universe throws at you, you're going to be able to deal with it. Like, so just go for it. And, yeah. uh, 
And so on that note, what does the universe have in store for you these days? What are you doing these days? How can people connect with you? How do they find you? Ask you questions, get in touch. What's the scoop? Oh, dude. Oh, my God. So many amazing things. I just love it. Well, first and foremost, uh, you can find me on my website, amazeauthority.com, A-M-A-Z, authority.com. That's kind of easy. Facebook is Amazon with Ashley. That's pretty easy. But what I'm working on right now, which I am so excited about, is hopefully within like literally the next couple of days, we have been working on this thing for like almost four months as we've created... I literally, you know, there's a hole in the system. I help establish product companies. And so I was trying to figure out, I'm always trying to figure out a way to help large and small e-commerce business uh, sellers on how to make more money, how to be able to sell their products better. Um, Cause you spend so much time in energy manufacturing and then, you know, you build the website and you know, maybe you're on Amazon and eBay and whatever. And then for some strange reason, the presentation of the product always seems to get missed or they don't put as much energy into it for the everyday listings. They will put energy into marketing something and making pretty graphics and so on and so forth. But if you just go to a regular product listing, it's like, here's the picture of the front, here's the picture of the back, here's like the picture an, of the side and the bottom. And like, that's about it. And it's like, yeah, like dude, an afterthought. It's just, yeah. It's just like, okay. So number one, when we go into a store, we like to touch things. We like tangible things and smell things. But when you're shopping online, which of course everyone is now, pandemic, where are you gonna go? Um, you wanna make something as tangible as possible online. You want to disqualify the competition as fast as possible so that the shopper does not get um, buyer decision fatigue, which is a huge problem that we have, especially during the holiday season. Do I buy this one or do I buy this one? And do I buy this one? Do I buy this one? And so you want to eliminate all that stress and you just want to make the buying process as easy as possible. So we've created drag and drop product infographic templates. And that's basically for anyone selling any products on any platform online. And it's really simple and it's 175 templates and 18 top selling categories. It's there's a huge amount of stuff in there and there's something for literally everybody. And it's just like, you have pictures of your product and you have um, stock images of, you know, ingredients for your product or what you do with your product, like hiking, biking or running or like honey or, you know, some sort of like coconut oil or whatever it might be. And so our templates are already beautifully organized in different natures that you just drag the picture in pop it in, add a little text, copy and paste, put in like, this is coconut oil. This is the best, blah, blah, blah. This is, you know, this is for, you know, uh, recommended by doctors or whatever it might be. And it's just beautifully organized, super fast, super simplistic. And then people don't have to spend the time, money and energy of hiring an, a graphic designer or an agency and going that back and forth and like, fix this, fix this, fix this. And most people don't have the graphic design sort of, you know, space going on inside their heads. So we've taken away all of those things for you. And all you got to do is pick which template looks good, drag a picture in that you already own, and then just copy and paste the information about your product that you already have. And then Bob's your uncle. You're done. Download, upload, and sale, sale, sales. <laughs> <laughs> do the sale dance, you know? Uh, and by the way, like for those that are listening now, explain just real briefly what you mean by infographic, because you're not talking about just one general picture you're talking and get tell me if i'm wrong it's like you know it's a picture of the thing but then you know it's there's like it's pointing to different yeah. various right i mean yeah. that's it's like the so, it's like yeah it's basically as i mentioned before most people just put up regular pictures of their product and an infographic picture basically is okay this is the cell phone i'm going to turn it around so this is the cell phone and so here's your picture. And then you're going to have an arrow going, this is where the camera thing Mabobber is. And there's a hole here for this button. And there's like space down here to like plug your thing in and so on and so forth. Or it's like, you know, or like uh, those like circle magnified areas and circle stuff magnified like that. areas as to like, you know, this is where the speaker is, um, you know, and things of that nature. So there's a, a 
depending on your product, it obviously it's going to look different, but most product listings have the opportunity of having nine images. And so this is your, it's your job to create a storyboard outline. It's literally like a movie trailer. Like everyone gets hyped up about a movie. It's coming, it's coming, and it's coming in September and September's like three months away or whatever. And you have to kind of do the same thing with your product listing. People don't like to read. People like to look at things. And so, and people remember and retain 80% more information when they see a visual with the con, uh, with the text as well. So if you're just creating, you know, picture number one, features and benefits, like who, what, where, how, why, and when. And if you answer all those questions inside a picture using graphic representation. So if it has honey in it, put a honeycomb image. If it has coffee beans in it, put a pile of coffee beans in there somewhere. You know, so people can be told a story without having to read. And again, making something intangible, as tangible as possible. Because if you don't let people know there's an inside pocket in this jacket, if someone really needs to have an inside pocket because that's their make or breaker, like my husband, he will not buy anything if it doesn't have a spot for his cell phone on the inside of his jacket. And if he doesn't know it, he ain't gonna buy it. So that's, you know, having those product infographics is extremely important to get the message across to your shoppers, what the product is and who it's for and how to use it and what's in it and, and things of that nature. I love it, I love yeah. it. And, uh, and I've actually, so I've put a link because it hasn't been released yet, but you still get on the waiting list, right? Yeah, thank you. Yeah, the waiting list is, is there. So definitely jump on. Um, we're really excited to open the gates up for our beta testers, you know, give her the first kick. I've had so much great feedback so far. Um, everyone that I've talked to, it's really solving a massive problem because most people have to pay like $900, 400 to $900 just to get you know five images created for them from a graphic designer. And it's usually like a three week to a four week turnaround period to work with you know, graphic designers. I've experienced it, I've spent a boatload of money on it. So I'm just really excited to be able to take that pain and that, yeah, that pain point away from any physical product seller so they can very quickly get the message across about what their product is and they can you know really boost their conversion rates because that's what it is at the end of the day you disqualify your competition you provide the information the customer needs in order to make that educated buying choice which allows the conversion rates to go up and it decreases your returns because the customer knows what they're buying it's not like i wasn't too sure and here i'm going to give you a return um and, and we've been testing this out on tons of accounts and we've literally had one account go from twenty thousand dollars a month their average is about 20 grand a month for about five months. And as soon as we implemented the product images on their best selling listings, which they literally only had two out of hundreds of listings, but two are like the ones that were really um, generating most of the revenue, went from 20 grand a month to 52,000 and 30, day, 30 days later, just by doing that, just optimizing the listing. So it really amazing. proves a point that people just want to see what the hell it is that they <laughs> are trying to buy. Yeah. Just give them all the information. It's really that easy. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, I mean, it jives really well with the person that I had on yesterday, Stephanie Moran, because we talked all about Pinterest and we were talking about mm. that very thing, like that yep. it's all visual. It's so, everything is so visual on that. So I don't know if you, if you can adapt these in the future sometime for, for Pinterest boards and stuff, creating products for Pinterest. But anyway, um, might be good. And I want to just throw this up because uh, this is a good question. Um, so Tara says, is this format good for book selling? If you are on Amazon, have you had the, have you had uh, authors use these templates at all? You know what? I haven't. And it's really, I'm actually kind of happy that you brought that up because I've published six books through there. And at the end of the day, yes, you technically could use it. You know, you wouldn't use it in the same sort of extent that product sellers would be because they're literally going, okay, this image is about the features. This one's about the benefits. This is the how to use. This is the who it's for. But with the book, you could very well do the exact same thing where think of it as like a marketing tactic. If you were going to advertise and market the book, which anytime you advertise and market anything, people put tons of time and energy and create these beautiful graphics because it's going to go into an ad on Facebook or Google, and you're paying money to have that picture there, so it better be great. <laughs> and then they don't do it on their listing, which I always find kind of interesting. But when it comes to the books, it's kind of the same thing. So it's like, this is the book, and then it very well could be, you know, the backdrop could be, okay, this is, you know, staged on the ocean. So it could be like water behind, you know, the book or something. And I, again, I'm not a graphic designer, but I'm just spitting it out there. Um, and maybe, um, the book is about, um, or maybe it's more sort of religious, or maybe it's more about self development or something along those lines. And you can you can put that text beside the book inside the image of explaining 
what's happening. And you do see it where people put um, reviews. So you have a picture of the book and then you have quotations of the review that someone left about the book. And that's technically kind of the same thing. So yeah. yes, you absolutely could just modify it to and do it, you know, what's working for what you're trying to accomplish. And what I love about your templates, honestly, is that like, it makes that experimentation so much easier, oh my God, yeah. right? You know, yeah. like you can just iterate. Seconds. Yeah, exactly. Just <laughs> iterate through. 175 of them to go through. I'm sure you can find yeah. one. <laughs> <laughs> So honestly, Ashley, uh, so good to have you here. I Every time that we talk, I learn something from you. So this has been such a great conversation. Um, I just want to say thank you for your time. To thank everybody that's been listening to this. Oh, uh, I'm everybody. sure they got so many nuggets of wisdom. Um, so as we wrap up, is there anything that you want to leave people with? Just a last, <sighs> last word sort of thing from Ashley? You know, honestly, pay it forward enjoy life, have the attitude of gratitude. Uh, and like, you know, my, my mentors now that their number one motto is hope, help one person every day. And honestly, I think if everyone lived by that motto, the world would definitely be an amazing place for everybody to live in. I agree 100%. So guys, thank you so much for watching, for tuning in, for listening. This is Josh Ashley streaming live on Fire Builders Live. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. And we will Bye, see everybody. you guys next time. Adios. Bye.